Hey guys, this is Stinger from the Ghost Squad and Airsoft team, and today I'm going to be talking about correcting piston angle of engagement. Now, a lot of people are confused as to what it means to correct the piston AOE. I know that Acorn from MTAC at one point believed that AOE referred to the motor height of the um, motor when it sits down beneath the bevel gear, and uh, the height of it and the angle that it engaged the bevel gear. Um, and while you could say that is the angle en of engagement of the motor or of the pinion gear, typically when you refer to AOE or angle of engagement, uh, you're talking about the piston AOE and the angle at which the sector gear contacts the first tooth of the piston. One of the main problems that stock guns tend to have is that the uh, sector gear contacts the piston at about this angle right here um, where the first tooth, the pickup tooth of the sector gear is in a one o'clock or two o'clock position uh, on what you would you know consider like a clock. If this is 12 o'clock pointing that way that's one and then that's two. So typically this is what stock angle of engagement looks like. The inherent problem with this is that you put a lot of force on that first tooth and it's at a very bad angle for transferring the energy. This can often cause you to uh, break out this back tooth right here or strip the piston uh, altogether or on uh, much lower quality gears. You could also strip the sector gear or one of the other gears if it locks up. Ideally, what you want is for the uh, pickup tooth of the sector gear to be pointing in a exactly vertical direction pointing to the 12 o'clock position on a clock, just like that. And there is two main ways to do this. Basically what you have to do is put some sort of spacer up here that spaces the piston body back. Now the first method I've seen for correcting piston AOE is something that I believe to be inherently wrong or incorrect. It is what Brian from Echo One at the Echo One Tech Support channel does. Um, he's shown in one of his videos. So. First, to understand how what he does works, you have to understand how this comes apart. And it is basically just uh, a piston head like this that is screwed inside of the piston shell like that, the piston body. So you have a screw that actually runs through it. <clears throat> and he takes old tappet plates that he's not using and he cuts them into segments. He puts a hole through them and then he attaches them in between the piston body and the piston head, which moves the piston head forward relative to the piston body. And that of course would move the piston body backwards when it's sitting inside the gun and put it into the proper position. Now he's able to remove material from those broken tappet plates to get the tuning just correct and get the position just correct. However, his method brings about some disadvantages. The main disadvantage is that you risk stripping the piston head right out of the piston body because as you move those two pieces apart, the amount of threads that are from that screw that are in contact with the piston head uh, diminishes. So you're essentially just moving that backwards and that can make it very easy for the piston head to just strip right out uh, when it's under a load, uh, especially if you're in a high stress or building a high stress gearbox something that is high FPS or that is high rate of fire. So you're going to want to go about correcting the AOE uh, through a different method. Now, what is really the only other way to do this is to put material somewhere in front of the piston head uh, and behind the cylinder head, somewhere in that space. Now you won't want to attach it to the piston head because that would cover up the vents on the front. And just this moving back and forth could likely separate any material that you put there. So the uh, primary way that people correct AOE and what I believe to be the best way is to attach material to the back of the cylinder head. So you can use a variety of materials and attachment methods to make that effect. However, I've found a very good combination of the two um, as a result of doing research and watching what other people do. Essentially, this is what the majority of the airsoft tech community does to correct AOE. This is called a sorbothane pad, and it is kind of like a rubber, um, but it's also got the properties of a foam, so it's not quite either of the two. And it can be attached to the back of the cylinder head to create a spacer, basically, which moves the piston back. Now, this offers some additional advantages, um, which 
make it a very good choice, especially if you compare it against the uh, Echo One Tech Support method. First is that this creates a cushion. The cushion is able to displace a lot of that energy and prevent it from causing cracks in your gearbox shell, breaking the cylinder head, among other things. Um, you could possibly break the piston head. This basically just adds a pad there and that dissipates some of the energy. It also acts as a method of quieting the gun just a slight amount. Uh, it eliminates some of that hard crack noise that you hear, that pop noise, when the gun fires. And that noise is just from this happening inside the gun. So a lot of people are wondering how they can make their guns quieter and this is one of the ways in addition to shimming among other things. I've seen other people use uh, rubber washers that look very similar to this in place of that and while that is possible and it's much more affordable, the rubber does not have the same uh, energy dampening properties as sorbethane and it will not work as good to make the gun quieter and it will not dissipate that energy as well. So you definitely get what you pay for. Now if you're looking for good sorbo pads, these are scatter plot laser cut sorbo pads. Um, these are 70 durometer. Durometer refers to the hardness, so there's 40 duro and 60 duro and 70. Um, ideally you want around 70 duro. I found that to be a very good combination of uh, energy dampening as well as uh, hardness and reliability because uh, you don't want these things falling apart inside of the gun. This is 1 8 of an inch thick. You can get them in varieties of different thicknesses um, and this one is cut specifically for version 2 or version 3 gearboxes but they can be cut for other ones as well uh, and you can buy these on Brill Armory for a relatively low cost. Brill also sells these 1 16th of an inch neoprene pads which you can use just as a very small increment if you're very finely tuning the gun uh, as well as a protection for the sorbothane surface because some piston heads after uh, large amounts of use or in high stress setups can actually degrade the surface of the, th of the sorbothane pad and tear it apart and eventually it will disintegrate inside of there after a large amount of use. So if you want to build a very reliable setup, I would recommend that you use uh, at least one neoprene pad just to cover up the sorbo pad there and uh, prevent it from disintegrating or otherwise just becoming damaged. So I mentioned that there is a variety of attachment methods for uh, putting this to the cylinder head and I found that really the best way is to use some sort of adhesive, something like a super glue or contact cement. Now I've heard of people using epoxy which I find to be just a very bad choice. Epoxy forms a very hard resin and things that are hard tend to be brittle and brittle things disintegrate and crack, break up easily after repeated hard impacts like this. And for that reason, epoxy will likely fail. What you want, ideally, is adhesive that will form a flexible bond between the two surfaces and give and take a little when it comes under impact. For that reason, my two choices of adhesives are contact cement or super glue. Now before I talk more about my choices of adhesives, I'm going to talk you guys through the beginning steps of correcting the piston AOE. When you start out, you're going to want to make sure that you have enough sorbethane pads to complete the job, so you might want to measure the gap that you will have to deal with here. As you can see, that one is not very large. I can certainly do it with the two 1 8 of an inch sorbo pads that I have here, as well as the 1 16th of an inch neoprene pad. Now. You do not need to get it exactly right the first time, you can always add more and if you need to take some away, you can just kind of shave off a little bit uh, from one of the sorbo pads that you attach. I would recommend that before you start doing all of this, you make sure that your cylinder head is the one that you're going to want to use for the far future as well as the piston, piston head, um, and probably the gearbox shell as well. The reason I say this is because if you change out one of those parts, you may have to uh, redo the piston AOE. And once you attach this, you really cannot take it off and move it to another cylinder head or something like that. So certainly if you plan on upgrading the cylinder head in the future, uh, I would recommend you upgrade it before you correct the AOE. But along the same line, 
Tracking the AoE is going to be one of the first mods that you do to your gun to prolong the reliability of it. So the gun that I'm working on right now is Android's HK416. Um, this is going to be his new custom primary. As you can see right now, I'm, I'm basically building it for him and one of the things I have to do is correct the AoE. So while I'm doing that, because it has been requested several times, I'm making a video about it. When this gun is done, there will be a full video on it, but for now, you know, you're gonna have to wait. So we are putting this uh, version two cylinder head made by SHS. It's a CNC machined aluminum cylinder head with a red anodized coating on it. Fairly popular cylinder head among the airsoft tech community. And it's going to be replacing this plastic stock one right here. Now you may notice that a lot of them come with uh, these little rubber pads on them already. And that is not really to correct the AOE, but it's more for the dampening properties uh, that you get when you install the Soro pads and stuff. So that kind of dampens some of, dampens some of the impact and uh, might prevent, you know, some of the cracking or other problems. However, because it's not as thick as the full Sorbo pads, it doesn't give you the AOE effect and it also does not dissipate that energy as well. So you can choose to remove this if you want. The only problem is that sometimes, like for these ones, there is an inset that it kind of goes into and when you go to attach a Sorbo pad, you won't have a flat surface to attach it to. You will instead have something that's got a little dip in it. And that's a problem because you need a flush surface for it to go up against. While you want it to be flat, you do not want it to be smooth because you are gluing things, you're using adhesives, and they attach better to something that is rough because they can get into the crevices and the spaces and latch in there, connect, and hold. So a flat surface does not hold as well as something that's kind of scraped up a bit, which is why you can see I've roughened this up. I took some sandpaper and rubbed away at it and that has made it so that it is rough enough that the uh, adhesive will attach very well to it. Now because we're working with adhesives and silicon oil is a very popular lubricant for airsoft guns, uh, there's a little bit of a problem. Silicon oil tends to uh, prevent adhesives from attaching well and silicon oil is also very difficult to get off a of surface after you've applied it. So you need to make sure that you uh, make this very clean before you do gluing otherwise if there's silicon oil that's gotten on that in the past, it's not going to stick well at all. So you need to clean both the sorbo pad that you are attaching as well as this. I would recommend doing it with isopropyl alcohol um, and just give it a good scrub down to make sure that there's no oils or anything on it that could prevent the adhesive from attaching well. If you want a method of uh, holding this upright without having to, you know, try and balance it on that nozzle right there, you can turn the uh, you can turn it upside down inside of the cylinder, and that holds it very well just like that. As long as you don't apply too much pressure to it, it won't fall through. So now to move back to adhesives. Like I mentioned, these are the two types of adhesives that I have used in the past, and they have worked very well. The first is contact cement, and this is a very uh, unique adhesive. It's basically a liquid rubber that you apply to both surfaces and then wait, and then when you attach it, the two surfaces bond very strongly and they do not move at all. As soon as you touch it together like that, it's not coming apart, um, unless you, know, you really try to break it apart. The only problem with it is that if you do not get it right the first time, there's no way for you to move it around and get it lined up properly. You have to, you know, you have to really line it up very well the first time you do it. And then the easier alternative is super glue. This is super glue that is made by uh, the Gorilla Glue Company. This is very strong and it works pretty much just as well as the contact adhesive, the contact cement. And it's the most easy to use. You just apply it, attach, and then there's a little bit of time before it's fully cured where you can slightly adjust it if you want to get it lined up perfectly. So I'm going to be using the super glue in this just so it's easy to show you and because it's probably what most people are going to use. I doubt most people are going to go out and buy contact cement for this. 
this tends to be cheaper and much easier to use. So, once you've gotten this set up, you're going to want to make sure that all of this is clean. Like I mentioned earlier, let any isopropyl alcohol evaporate off. It does that fairly quickly. And then just put some small amounts of the super glue onto the cylinder head. Just in little dots like that. Do not need a lot. You don't need to slather it on. And that should work right there. Carefully put the sorbo pad on, make sure it's lined up, press, and then release the pressure, and it should be bonded pretty well. After that, you're going to want to let it cure just for about 5 to 10 minutes, not very long, uh, just long enough for it to form a solid bond, and then you can move on to the next step, which is to add more, or uh, if necessary, shave some of this material off. So to test whether or not you're going to need to add or remove, you will need to assemble it inside of the cylinder just for the sake of uh, keeping it together as real as possible um, and as true as to how it would be inside of the gun. So with it all together, make sure that the piston is pushed as far forward as possible and then take a look and see how it's lining up. So for this right here, you can see that it is just almost at that 12 o'clock position we need to bump it back a slight amount and that's where the neoprene pad comes in. Now attaching the neoprene pad follows pretty much the same process. You will want to just mark up the sorbo pad a little bit. You can use an exacto knife or something similar. This is just so that the adhesive bonds well and is able to get inside of these marks and get a good hold on the sorbo pad so that it stays on and does not fall off. Once you've done that, you will want to clean this surface as well as the uh, neoprene pad surface that you are attaching. Once those have been cleaned, you can uh, apply the adhesive that you are using. You use the same process that you used for attaching the sorbo pad. Just small amounts of glue. And actually I think I used a little bit too much in some areas uh, where it's kind of clustered together. Realign it if you can, make sure it's set up properly on there, and there you go. Allow that to bond, and then you can wipe away uh, any excess adhesive on the outside or cut it off if it uh, hardens up. Clean off, of, clean off the surface, and then you should be all set, uh, assuming that this is to the correct propor proportions to space the piston back enough. All right, so I've allowed that to cure and I've reassembled it so that we can look at how it's lining up. And as you can see, the angle of engagement is now perfect in that vertical 12 o'clock position. So this gun is all set. That's pretty much all there is to it. I would recommend that before you shoot it, you allow it to cure for at least an hour, uh, just to make sure, even, even though super glue uh, claims that it is cured in 30 seconds, I would recommend that you just let it sit for a while before you actually apply a large amount of stress to it uh, in firing the gun. And that is to, just to ensure that it does not break because if, uh, if the adhesive between these fails you will have to pretty much redo the whole thing because you will not be able to properly re-adhere it uh, where there has already been the adhesive. Thank you guys for watching this video. I know this tech guide was uh, pretty heavily requested, so I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope it was informative to you. Once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys later.